Welcome all ye boils and ghouls to a tale they'll never teach in school. And hello everybody, hope everybody's there, I hope everybody's looking after themselves, and welcome back to Monster on Or. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more videos like this one as well. We also have Military Aviation Heritage Museum online, where we bring you aviation and military programs. You can look at that on our website for videos to do with that. But today we are talking about history. And folklore stories and ghost stories around Hessel. Hessel is a little village located in Hull, East Yorkshire, on the River Humber. You can actually go to the foreshore in Hessel and uh, view the Humber Bridge from Hessel, believe it or not. Hessel has a dark past as well as a historical past. So, welcome to Monster Unlocked, and welcome to Hessel. So, our first location of the show is Hessel Foreshore. This foreshore is known for a lot of things. It is, of course, the viewing location where you can see the Humber Bridge up close and personal uh, from a ground level and take fantastic pictures. Um, from Hessel, um, for sure. It also has a sexual grooming past as well with young teenage girls who used to go to Hessel for sure and get raped and sexually abused and tra trafficked and sadly it still happens today. And it is still under investigation by Humber Side Police. It is also known or to or been a shipyard at one time for the Royal Navy during the Second World War. It has also been the location of people trying to commit suicide from jumping uh, off the Humber Bridge. It is home to the Hessel Lifeboat, uh, which is an independent charity which saves lives in the sea and Humber Estuary, um, which uh, their boathouse is located at Hessel Foreshore. In the past, the Humber has seen the likes of people trying to cross it. Uh, it's known for mud flaps and stuff along those lines. Uh, there has been reports that people have also tried to climb the Humber Bridge, but uh, due to the bylaws of the Humber Bridge, that is actually illegal. You can be prosecuted for doing so as well, and people have. But this is Hessel for sure. It's also a nature reserve as well.
In May 2019, police launched Operation Marksman, an investigation into an alleged gang of child abusers in Hull. They told us when we first got involved in the investigation, they were not going to stop till they were all behind bars. And now, two years later, they're all walking free. Already, we've spoken to two alleged victims. Three others gave us supporting testimony. Like most rape cases, this investigation folded without charges. But did the police miss a crucial witness? I ended up in Hull because of a gang of individuals um, who were trafficking me for sexual exploitation. The young woman we'll call Kate hasn't been interviewed by police in this investigation, yet her testimony seems significant. What do you remember about Hull? Which sort of places did you go to? The place I remember most is Hessel for sure, but I just remember being back of cars, just being raped and sold. Hessel Foreshore is somewhere other girls mention. Kate also names some of the same individuals. If she was trafficked into the city, her story would add another dimension to this case, implying a larger scale network. The only way I can describe it is like different hubs. So you would have like a local group who run an area but then like they're networked in with other areas and then what they would do is swap girls and then you'd be that groups for say the night or a couple of days and then you go back to yours. But there were like common people throughout them all. In previous reports, we've told you about two young women, one we called Sarah and another Anna, who were at the center of Operation Marksman. Another young woman says after she went to the police, she was threatened, and this photo posted on Snapchat of a knife and a gun. Other evidence includes diaries documenting abuse, a school log where a teacher makes hundreds of entries about exploitation concerns, photos that support claims a girl was beaten and strangled, and a screenshot of a text where a schoolgirl is told that if she doesn't come for sex with the men, they will kill her and bury her near the water. If we've got an image, if it depicts a bruise, um, a, a, tech, a copy of a text message, yeah. that is a standalone piece of evidence. We then need to look at what evidence around that supports that. So we can yeah. say without a shadow of a doubt, when we get to court, that that bruise has been caused by this person in these circumstances. Humberside police say they've made 34 arrests and seized 150 devices and didn't find supporting evidence, but admit that criminals can have multiple phones and that with Snapchat, their messages disappear. Do you accept that maybe the digital evidence just isn't going to exist because it's done on Snapchat? That, that, of course it is. You know, that is a possibility that's always going to be there. We, if we can't see it, we can't prove it. So then what I'm saying is, if you've got the school reports, you've got the teacher saying, well, I saw the text, you've got the girl showing you the strangulation marks, aren't you going, mm, well, we haven't got the digital evidence? Well, hang on a second, why don't we just test this in court? Getting something to court, as I'm sure you're aware, is, you know, it's not easy. We've got to get through the evidential threshold. So have we done every line of inquiry we can? Yes, I'm confident we have had. Op Hydrant have been into reviewers. They are confident with the investigation they've done. They've stated we've followed best practice. Have you spoken to any other women who've been trafficked into Hull from outside of Hull? That's not relevant to this, is it? It's not relevant? I don't believe so. Because we're talking, I thought you were talking about the ins and outs of marksmen. If anyone was brought into Hull and abused by the same people, that wouldn't fall into the inquiry? No. Police later clarified that would form part of their investigation if it happened in the same time frame and locations. And we've given them Kate's details. But she is mistrustful, having spoken to other police forces about sexual abuse in other areas. I think, I think I'd need some reassurances before I spoke to any police again that I wouldn't be palmed off as a liar or that I'm insane or that I'm a prostitute. I think they've got a lot of work to do to gain trust back. 
In grooming cases, evidence can be particularly conflicting. Texts from victims to suspects might look complicit, making the evidence threshold harder to cross. Psychotherapist Joe Wagstaff works with groomed young women, including one of our victims. You've listened to those stories. What do you think? As to whether I believe them, I absolutely believe them. You know, to, to sit with somebody who describes that level of abuse um, and you can, you can feel that pain, the hurt, the shame, the blame, the guilt. I think the more cases that are left with, with no further action, um, it will prevent young people from coming forward because what's the point? Exploitation expert Jim Gamble, who helped us examine this evidence, doesn't blame frontline police but says they're under-resourced. I think if, if we're looking at how do we really make a difference from a criminal justice point of view, that is that we do treat this as seriously as we treat terrorism. That is that we actually release surveillance resources to collect pattern of life on these individuals, that we use technical surveillance so that we can monitor where they are and who they're talking to. This is organised, you know, industrial level rape. How did you feel, you know, when this sort of came to an end and you had to say that, guys, we, we've exhausted all our lines of inquiry? Disappointed, upset, um, disappointed for the girls. You know, th this is their, this has been their, they've lived through some horrific offences. Anna and Sarah believe their evidence should be enough. They said unless more girls come forward, they can't take it to court. So basically, more girls to be abused so they can put the men in prison. I know if I stood up in a court of law and I can say this one million percent, if I told my story, my full, full story to a court of law, they'd believe me. Evidence or no evidence, they would believe me because it's not something you can just make up. The biggest concern for the people of Hull is that if what they say is true, it could still be happening. Which is why Sky News will continue to follow this story wherever it takes us next. Jason Farrell, Sky News. And welcome back. Today we're in Hessel in East Yorkshire, located in Hull. It's a small local village located in Hull. We are actually at Hessel Clubs of Stewards. The treasurer is Richard Smith. The Hessel X Servicemen Club originally opened doors in 1921 for service personnel. It is deemed to be haunted by old sailors and shipmen. And it is still a functioning club today. Our next location in Hessel today is the Amaril 
pub this dates back to 1766 and it is still a functioning pub and it is deemed to be haunted by the ghost of a old shipman oh <coughs> Our next location in Hessel today is the Wimot Memorial Hall. This is deemed to be haunted by a old gym instructor. Our next location in Hessel Hall, East Yorkshire, today is the Methodist Church. This dates back to 1870 and it was designed by William Bossowell. It was also a schoolroom and well attended up to 1912. It is still a functioning church where you can go and uh, worship. It is deemed to be haunted by a old. Vicar. <laughs> 